Good evening. Um, welcome to the Milford School Committee meeting uh, for Thursday, October 9th, 2014. Uh, this meeting is being recorded. We do have members of the media present, of uh, both uh, newspaper as well as uh, Milford TV present. For any uh, broadcast of this, uh, anybody would like a broadcast or a copy of this uh, meeting, please feel free to reach out to myself or any members of the school committee. Uh, good evening, everyone. We'll go ahead and get ourselves started off uh, with the approval of minutes. Everyone has, an, has had an opportunity to review the minutes from our most recent meeting. Um, if we can get a motion from Patrick, second from Joe, all in favor? Okay, there'll be one abstention as I was not in attendance at that meeting. So we'll have six in favor, one abstention. Uh, next item on the agenda uh, is invitation to speak. We have anyone here for invitation to speak? Seeing no one, we will move on to the next agenda item. Up next, we have announcements and correspondence. Does any member have any announcements or correspondence? Patrick. Um, I do have an announcement. I had an opportunity last week to attend our um, K through two recess evaluation with, uh, I didn't have an opportunity to attend the parent session, but I did have an opportunity to attend the teacher's session. Um, I wanna thank the teachers for coming out and sharing their opinions. Um, I thought it was, it was a thoughtful discussion. It was very professional. I think that they made they made their case um, very well. Uh, it was good dialogue, and I would just like to thank everyone um, that did come and, and did attend. I thought it was a very productive session for us. I today had the opportunity to, to be here at the high school. The National Honor Society welcomed five new members, and I just wanted to thank Carrie for uh, running a, a really nice uh, event for the parents as well as the students that were inducted. Great. Any other members? That's uh -huh. true. Yes, oh. I was going to say, I, I actually did have something as well. Um, so I had an opportunity to attend the parent forum, which I realized was just past the teacher forum. Unfortunately, I was not able to get to the teacher forum. Um, and again, wanted to you know, certainly thank uh, Kevin for, uh, for running the meeting. And, and also, I know there were many other members in attendance, but wanted to thank the parents for coming out. Um, you know, certainly a lot of passion around this, around this issue. Uh, it was great to see the parent participation, some great questions and some great uh, issues that were brought up. Um, I did want to uh, just make the committee aware I did receive a, an email that the parent actually asked that I, I bring in and, and just go over with the committee. It was actually a parent that was in attendance at this. I know uh, she did mention that she's been in touch with Dr. McIntyre as well as the teachers, um, but did want to just let you guys know what the, what the parent had said. Um, parent's email uh, just said, um, you know, I'll give you permission to mention my name as well as my children's name in the correspondence from Milford School Committee purposes. You have my permission to use both names. Um, the uh, parent's name is um, Audra, and the last name is L-I-Z-A-R-R-A-L-D-E, Lazardi. Um, and she also included some emails that she's gone back and forth with Dr. McIntyre on. Um, what she had specifically said was that um, she's, speaking, she's spoken with Dr. McIntyre as well as um, with her and her husband. You've gone back and forth with emails between her and Lisa Burns. Uh, she feels as though, in her opinion, um, that the student, that uh, the ownership is not being taken for the policies and procedures that's being asked the staff to implement. Um, specifically as it relates to, um, she is a, uh, a, a child who is being removed from lunch recess one day a week to receive spe uh, special education services. Um, I know part of the conversation that I had with her as well was for, with regards to some concerns she expressed at the parent forum as it relates to uh, um, some of the things that were brought up as far as the reason for the adjustment with the recess was to be able to provide services for special education. The parent had brought up at the forum um, that she felt as though this was um, this was something that was uh, really uh, attacking, was her words, the, the um, inclusion model. Um, these were her words, not mine, just to be, just to be fair. Um, I did speak with her today. She did, she, she did mention and included the emails that she's been going back and forth mm -hmm. with you. I know you guys are in the process of working through this. The parent specifically asked that I read the email uh, during, the, during, during the meeting this evening. So I did want to make you guys aware of this. Um, but it was more that her biggest concern was that uh, her student, in addition to obviously the changes in some of the recesses, she is a kindergarten parent, just for information. Um, in addition to the recess changes as well as the, the nap time and rest, and rest time changes, this student as well as, um, as well as others are being removed from lunch recess as well, one, at least one day a week to receive speech services. So something that she wanted to make sure that I brought to the committee's attention. I know that Dr. McIntyre, you're already working with her. I know Lisa Burns is as well, but Absolutely. I want to make sure that uh, I 
brought this to the attention of the committee. Mr. Chairman, yes, uh, it may be useful, uh, Dr. McIntyre, if you don't mind giving an update. Since the last time the, the committee met, we had parents here expressing concern. Since then, we've had two forum events, one, Correct. as uh, uh, Mr. Holland mentioned, for uh, faculty, and then a second one for families. Um, we we want to you know, echo those comments to thank the families and staff for coming out and expressing those concerns. It did not fall on deaf ears. We've had some, obviously, some follow-up meetings to that. Uh, that said, perhaps you might just make a couple of comments sure, so sure. for the um, committee and the public about what uh, we are. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I was, I was really impressed by the turnout, just to, again, echo what the, the committee members have said and, and Dr. Tremblay. Um, this past week, we've, uh, I've met with the two elementary principals. Uh, we reviewed the parent and teacher feedback, um, <coughs> which is very important. We looked closely at the kindergarten schedules. Um, we received a clarification from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education regarding the kindergarten time on learning requirements and how they differ from one through four and how they differ even when you go into the secondary level. And our plan is to um, communicate to parents probably by the end of next week. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna follow, I'm gonna follow up with a meeting with Ms. Burns and Ms. Firth probably either Monday or Tuesday and we'll be sending a communication out to everybody by the end of the week. Good. Okay. Uh, certainly as we saw during that parent forum, thank you for the mm -hmm. quick update. Absolutely. Certainly as we saw with the parents as well as, as we've heard from the teachers as well. A uh, lot of passion, a lot of energy around this particular issue. Um, I, I think you know one of the things, if I may just for a moment, I think one of the things that's certainly driving a lot of that is, as we've discussed, as, as you guys have discussed as well, is A, it was the communication, the way that it was driven out, mm -hmm. and B, I think some of the execution that's gone out, and, and, and the way that I think the intent was good, I think the execution <coughs> has been challenging. So I know that that's something that you're working towards and, and working to continue to correct. Um, it's certainly something that uh, having a five-year-old get off the bus and you know I was thinking about this and putting myself even putting myself in that if I got off, if I got a got into work at seven seven thirty quarter of eight in the morning and my first coffee break where I was able to get out of my office in some cases with no windows wasn't until twelve thirty in the afternoon I'd probably be a little cranky in the afternoon when I got home too so if there's anything we can do I know one of the things that uh, you're going to be looking at is is, is there a way to be able to exercise outdoor, out, um, outdoor education and allowing the students to either be outside at some point um, during the day, have a teacher conduct part of their class outside and giving them that freedom to be able to d still get outside, get some fresh air, get some exercise and engage in some social activities. Um, I think that would go a long way towards continuing to allow the, allow the students to get some exercise, get some freedom as well as you know, get that much needed break as part of that 15 minute break that we already got built in. So I know that you're actively working on that and look forward to seeing an update. Any other announcements or correspondence? Uh, yeah, I wanted to share with the committee. Uh, last Friday, uh, you may recall that Milford uh, schools are part of the Blackstone Valley Education Foundation. And I wanted to just give an update there uh, under the leadership of Matt Bayon, our guidance director, Rich Johnson. Rich Johnson's an engineering teacher at the high school. Uh, on Friday, uh, October 3rd, two dozen Milford High School students participated in a large career awareness program uh, Blackstone Valley Education Foundation coordinated a local Massachusetts Manufacturing Day initiative, and John Fernandes was, was a big leader in that effort for us. Uh, this is a cooperation between the Blackstone Valley Chamber of Commerce, Manufacturing Extension Partnership, and the National Park Service. And I want to just comment and thank the students that attended and represented Milford so well, and the uh, staff who led them there. So it's just great to be part of this. Again, this goes back to our, you know, this is an initiative of getting hands-on learning for, for kids who may be interested in pursuing something in manufacturing that's outside of uh, you know, college and career, and career readiness. So I wanted to just acknowledge that and that we had two dozen students attend wow. and uh, made Milford proud as they do. Great. Okay. Uh, we'll move on to uh, our next agenda item, which is introduction of our newest uh, principal and administrator. So uh, uh, Mr. Hughes, if you'd come on right on up to uh, our table here. So certainly want to introduce, uh, int if you can just introduce yourself, you're the Middle School East Interim Principal. So I'll right. you kind of welcome. Thank thanks, for, thanks for coming to Milford. We've heard great things. It was nice to meet you on the first day of school, but I'll let you introduce yourself to the community as well as the committee. Great, well, thank you very much for having me uh, in your district. I appreciate the opportunity. I'm excited by it and uh, I'm enjoying it. I think it's going well. I'm very happy uh, with the faculty and students at East. Uh, it's, it's been a really fast two months <laughs> since I've uh, joined the district. Um, and it's been uh, reaffirming, kind of closing a circle in m many ways. There are a couple of 
So far, I've met a handful of kids whose parents I had as students when I was teaching back early in my career. And I've also found a uh, faculty member uh, whose husband was a former student of mine. So uh, kind of a small world. I've always had a great deal of respect for Milford, uh, both academically and athletically as an administrator. And back in the day when I was coaching and officiating, uh, a number of my friends have, have lived here and continue to live here. And, uh, it, it's a great opportunity to uh, stay in education and hopefully be of service to you folks. So uh, I appreciate the opportunity and, and thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I may just to yes. I, John, just give a the committee a little uh, sense of, I, although I did provide this back when, when you were appointed in the interim role, um, and of course John was, uh, is, um, he's done an excellent job and, and has a, an excellent track record. And just the right kind of fit for us with a two-year and you know the interim nature of the job and helping to transition what will be a big transition for us come with the time Woodland School is opening its doors and moving eighth grade into Stacy Middle School and moving grade five uh, to Woodland School. And so for all those reasons, John was the best fit for us. But maybe just tell the committee and the community who may not have the benefit of knowing a little bit about your background, uh, you know, some of the work that you've done prior to coming to Milford. Sure. Uh, well, I, uh, Natick. <coughs> Natick guy, uh, went to Natick High School. Uh, when I graduated, I went to Boston College. I got my master's degree there as well as my bachelor's. And when I uh, graduated, I went right into teaching and wound up uh, having several offers and took my hometown and started teaching in Natick at the uh, junior high level, uh, Wilson Junior High, grades seven through nine. And I taught there for 14 years, uh, was transferred to the high school, taught social studies there. I was uh, basketball and baseball assistant coach for 14 years uh, and then in 1985 I had the opportunity to go to Kennedy Middle School where I was vice principal for nine years and that was a, a very interesting time because the model changed from a seven through nine junior high school uh, the high school enrollment got smaller the ninth grade went to the high school so for one year we were grade seven and eight then we picked up the sixth grade, and then a couple of years later, we picked up the fifth. So uh, we became a five through eight middle school uh, for a number of years. And I then became principal of that school when Bill Donovan retired. I was named principal and was principal at Kennedy Middle School for eight years. And then uh, had the good fortune of being moved to Natick High School, where I finished my career in, in Natick 40 years fastest 40 years you could imagine uh, the last <laughs> eight years I was principal at Natick High School and I really tried to retire I, uh, I, I, I had <laughs> how's that working replacement. for you <laughs> I had a knee replacement I sat out for a year and uh, I found out that I'm a type A person and I couldn't stand it and I was actually went back subbing at the uh, Wilson Middle School down the street uh, friendly with the principal there and uh, substituted for a couple of months and had the opportunity uh, to go to Hamilton Wenham Regional High School as interim principal and experienced the world of being an interim, landing in a community that you really had no familiarity with. Um, the people were fabulous. The kids were great. It was a great opportunity. They had uh, an interesting set of circumstances and I wound up being asked to come back for a second year where I served second year as principal at Hamilton Wenham Regional High School uh, and then tried to retire again and that was <laughs> two summers ago and on the first day of school last year I got a call from the superintendent uh, my friend uh, who had, was the middle school principal had become ill and I started uh, they asked me if I would come back and take the middle school because I was still certified as a middle school principal and I did and uh, it started out on a month-to-month -month basis, but by around Thanksgiving time, uh, it was clear that I was going to be there for the year. My friend's doing well, I'm happy to say, um, but I was there last year, and then I was retired, and uh, I came home one day from playing golf, and my wife said, you got to listen to the message, and I listened to the message, and a friend of mine who lives in town said, in, in Milford, said, uh, well, there's an opening. I sent your name in. <laughs> if, you, if you get a call, um, and so I didn't think too much of it. And then a few days later, I got a call from Dr. Tremblay's office, and uh, 
would you come over and have a cup of coffee? And next thing you know, here I am. And I, I thank you for the opportunity. But it, it is, uh, it's been good in the sense that I've had the opportunity to be an interim in the past. And I do have middle school experience. And um, actually, the majority of my years have included eighth graders. So uh, it, it's a unique age. They've got a lot of energy. I try to keep up with them, they're finding out that the old guy can still move, and um, <laughs> so uh, they're a good crew. I was very, very proud of them yesterday. We had the Blackstone Valley Tech presentation, and several of the faculty told me that uh, it was the best behaved group we've had for, for the visitors in, in a number of years, so uh, they did themselves proud, so very pleased with that, and looking forward to a great year with them. Okay. That's great. Thanks, John. Thank you, John. And welcome to Milford, and thank, thank you. you for coming in. And we've heard, certainly heard some great stuff and, and some great things about your your time in already. So I'll, I'll try to live up to it. We'll see. What, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> You're like the Don Zimmer of education. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've I was thinking a lot like of things, but never that. <laughs> 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 That's not bad. I like that. <laughs> I was gonna say I was gonna say Brett Favre. So. <laughs> okay, too. Take it. Excellent. Okay, thank you, right. thank you so much. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a thank good you. Night. Have a good thank night. You. Thanks for coming. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. you. All right. So with that, we'll move on to our next agenda item, which is the superintendent cycle uh, end of cycle evaluation. Um, everyone has uh, in their Dropbox both a copy of their um, individual evaluation as well as what I put together from a summary. I want to just kind of walk through walk through for the benefit of the viewing public as well as for the committee members and the media that's present, um, how I put the summary together and kind of what this, how this presentation, uh, what this process will look like as we're going through this this evening. A um, Couple of things, I did receive the end of cycle summary from the group, thank you guys. Um, I, I saw a lot of the comments that were in there. Um, some of you, I, I, I'm gonna have to see if you guys have do uh, English tutoring for when my daughter's applying for college because some of you guys wrote some very lengthy responses which is fantastic um, I will tell you trying to put it all together and summarize it did, did not make it an easy task but it was it was great to see all the feedback and the passion that you guys put into it and clearly the effort um, as far as the process as I was putting together the the summary um, what I went through and my philosophy as I went through it was this I put I basically took each section as if we were voting on it as a group. So I took your individual responses, I took all of our individual responses, and majority ruled. So um, it was nice to see that in many cases, we were in pretty well in alignment, which tells me that we're all communicating well and actually thinking along the same lines, which is always good to see a committee that's uh, pretty well in sync. Um, you will notice that in the summary, um, there are no comments that were put in there. A and I will be very candid with the reason why those comments were not put in there. Um, some some of your of your summaries and your evaluations were put into bullet form in your comments, which would have been very easy to extract without taking things out of context. However, some were written in paragraph form. As a result, if I were to extract just individual lines from it, I felt as though it'd be take, uh, we run the risk of taking things out of context, and I'd, I run the risk and we run the risk at that point of either things being misinterpreted or skewed. I could have just put everybody's comment in, but this evaluation would have been about 75 pages long if I'd have done that, so I chose not to do that. Instead, what I'd like to do as part of this format is I'm gonna go through each individual section at the end of each section. If there's something that you have in your notes that you would like to pull out of context and add in from your own individual notes and add in a couple of, a couple of pieces of color um, th that uh, you'd like to add in, Dr. Tremblay has copies of everybody, so it's not that he won't have them. But if you feel that it's important that you bring something up that, you writ that you've written down in your evaluation, um, at the end of each section, we'll pause and we'll turn to the group to read any comments or any comments that you've written down. Any questions or concerns about the way that we're going to kind of go through this? No? Yeah? Okay. Perfect. So, um, go to page one of the, we'll go to just page one of the summary. Page one of the summary as we look through. Um, so, step one is assess progress towards goals. Uh, we were all in, uh, in pr pretty well in alignment on this one. So professional practice goals, um, the overall majority said that the goals were met. Student learning goals, the overall majority was that the goals were met. District improvement goals, it was that the, goal, the, overall, um, the overall assessment was that the goals were met. As we go through uh, step two, assesses, uh, assesses performance on standards. 
So step one is instructional leadership. Once again, the, the, the majority of the committee, it was on, it was a rating of proficient. Um, for the benefit of the viewing public, there are four ratings. It is unsatisfactory, needs improvement, proficient, and exemplary. And Bob, just from a context perspective, and keep me honest, yeah. the, the two middle ratings of proficient and needs improvement are what is, uh, is sort of what's been, sort of where the, as, we, as this was rolled out, is sort of where the standard falls in as many of these go through. Proficient is sort of the target. Exemplary is, is something that is more of an aspirational piece. There are components that will be through, but as this was rolled out a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. it was that, you know, if it, we went through and everything was exemplary, then it's, you know, right. we may be questioning the kids. So, so that, that, that's correct. In fact, okay. the, on, the, on the grades that you have, it's grayed out for that reason that the sort of proficient, as, as, uh, as Jen knows, as Kevin and Kathy know, um, and for the teachers, that's that's the target. It's, it's actually yep. bold faced and everything to say yep. that's really what you're aiming for. So proficient mm -hmm. is is where you want to be. There are areas uh, as that you know um, that are in here where that might be exemplary, needs improvement, and unsatisfactory. Uh, but proficient is the target. That's right. Okay, great. So just for and the on the curve, of needs improvement. And yep. So on the bell curve, needs improvement and proficient are sort of the highest that's highest correct. watermark. Yep, that's honest. And then uh, unsatisfactory and exemplary are sort of the the low percentage. So. Uh, standard one, instructional leadership, the, group, the, the, the majority was proficient. Standard two, manage, uh, management and operations, again, proficient. Uh, standard three, family and community engagement, once again, proficient. Standard four, professional culture, once again, the, the majority was proficient. So as an overall for that, uh, so for step three, uh, rating overall, uh, uh, summative performance was a proficient rating and again that's in line with uh, with the majority of the committee so um, we'll pause here if anybody has any comments from their individual assessment that they'd like to add in uh, now would be a good time Thanks. Patrick I'll start, I guess. <coughs> um, so I, I did uh, I did give Bob one exemplary and that's with his family and community engagement and that's something I've given him an exemplary in and every year since um, and so my comment on that is Bob's community engagement has continued to be exemplary. I've gone on, I've gone on a great deal detail in the past about his connection to the community that he serves. And, and I reference every comment that I've made in prior evaluations. They all still ring true today. And it's, it's, um, it's, just, it's, a, it's a pleasure to see um, the gusto with which you engage the community. It, it really is a very good thing. Thank you. Okay. Great. If I could, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, sure. I, uh, if I could go back to professional practices. Um, I gave Bob exceeded. Okay. Uh, in my opinion, I've, I've been out many times in the evening at different events when Bob's representing the Milford Public Schools. Um, he, uh, he represents us and makes us very, very proud. I think he's a very professional guy in his appearance, in his actions, in his thoughts, going on to get his doctorate, you know, this year. Mm -hmm. So I, I said that in my opinion, his practice, professional practice goals were exceeded. Um, like Patrick, um, in management and operations, family and community engagement, and professional culture, again, I gave him exemplatory. And the reason I did is, if you read the definition of why they want you to grade exemplatory, what stuck out to me, and I spoke to Bob about this earlier today, is that allows them to use it as a model of practice regionally and statewide. I'd be proud. I'd be proud for our district, under Bob's leadership, and Kathy and Dr. McIntyre as well. I would be very proud for us to be used. And that's why I graded those areas um, that way. I think his management skills are flawless. Um, I'll never forget when he announced the new principal at the high school. And I called him up and I told him, I said, you know, Bob, I'm, I'm jealous. He said, what are you jealous of? I said, well, the purpose of, or the or desire of any good manager is to surround yourself with a team of people that truly believe in your philosophy, and you've now done that. That's a true conversation that I had with him. So I think his management skills are, 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 are great, they're flawless to me. It, family and community engagement, I don't think you could ask for a superintendent more engaged in the community and, the, and families than, than Dr. Tremblay is. In professional culture, just to me, you just have to walk around and watch. And I think, mm -hmm. I, I think again, he, he makes us. Uh, he makes us very proud. I'm very proud to serve on the Milford School Committee, knowing that 
that you know, he serves as our superintendent and we have an administration and teachers and staff like we do. So thank you very much. Thank you. Any other members? I want, I'll add. Um, sure. One of the areas that I focused on, and I'll just quote, it's from the, the evaluation rubric for superintendents, um, that we expect a superintendent to demonstrate strong context and audience-specific interpersonal written and verbal communication skills and is able to model this element. And I think um, in line with what some of my colleagues around the table have just stated, one of the strengths of our superintendent is not just being a good communicator, but being able to break things down. There isn't a single topic that I've heard addressed that I have said afterwards, I don't really know what he's talking about. And we talk about so many complicated things in education and so many acronyms, and you've spoken about them yourself, Mr. Chairperson. And um, every time something is talked about, whether it's the hospitality program or the Chinese exchange program or the way that we're rolling out um, a student support model called RTI, you understand every single time what he's talking about. And you know, uh, similarly, as, as skilled as he is at that, I had mentioned in here that you go to the Brookside School and they have a cake raffle and the, on a Saturday afternoon and there's your superintendent running a cake raffle just as easily as we will see him running an honors program at the high school. So, you know, I know in a lot of districts we talk about the high school as a flagship and me as an elementary person, sometimes you feel a little bit slighted in the elementary <laughs> because you're not, you're, you're just not, it's not, you can't compare the two, but in this district I feel like everything is given equal, equal weight. and. Um, I've worked for many superintendents with many different strengths, and this really is singular um, in terms of what I've seen from Dr. Tremblay in terms of his support publicly for our schools. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, with that being said, we'll move on to the, the individual sections um, and just the overall ratings within and the ratings within those. Um, so the first one is performance rating on standard one, which is the instructional leadership. Just going through once again, the overall rating was a proficient um, in each of the categories, and I'm just going to read. I'm not going to read the details on it, but I will go through the the individual num the individual things. So first one is curriculum, next is instruction, following is assessment, evaluation, and then data informed uh, decision making. In each of these sections, the majority the, the majority of the committee responses uh, were proficient, so the overall rating was a proficient rating as well. Um, I know we sort of gave our overall comments. If there's any individual comments anybody would like to make on that particular section, I know we talked through it a little bit already, but any other individual comments? If I may, Mr. Chairman, after Patrick. Yep, Patrick first and then Mike. I think that uh, my main comment here, and I'll, I'll summarize it because it's, it's a little bit long. I'm, I'm a paragraph person, sorry. Um, uh, you, were, you were one of my textbook guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I think that the DESE makes keeping up with all of the current mm -hmm. standards very, very difficult. And I think, frankly, a lot of the DESE standards are not very well thought out. And so I think that uh, our team here, Bob, Kevin, I mean, our, our entire administrative team does a, a very good job of trying to juggle and maintain some sort of a, a, a sense of um, compliance with those guidelines, <coughs> even though some of them we all know aren't things that are necessarily productive towards educating students. So it's a difficult job, and, and I wouldn't want to have to juggle it. So, thanks. Mike, it uh, reminded me of a line from President Reagan, who once said, "I'm far from the brightest president, but I surround myself with the brightest." That's the truth. And um, <laughs> I, I, I graded Bob, and I said, you know, because of Bob's short time in years in the classroom, he w has to work very, very hard at curriculum and instruction. And I think he really, truly does. But he th I, I personally believe he hit a home run when he hired Dr. McIntyre to kind of lead that, lead that ship. And it just shows that he has the ability to say to himself, well, it's an area that I need help in, and I'm going to go get the person, whoever that person is, um, that can get that job done and, and, and do it right. And I was thinking the same thing is for Kathy, I, business management. I mean, I don't think we could find anybody as dedicated as in this almost six years that I've been here as, as you. And I, so again, Bob, I say you, you, you surround yourself with the best. You really, truly do. And that's, that's how the job gets done. So I, I congratulate you for, you know, some people would get angry when they get, you know, those kind of comments are made about them. You didn't get angry. You went out and got the job done. Good job. I, I would tell you just, uh, I'll, I'll add to my, my context here. This is the area in the three years that I've been doing this that I've, I've certainly seen some of the most growth from you. Um, you, uh, you took on a big challenge about a year ago, uh, a little over a year ago now, because Dr. McIntyre's been with us for a while. 
um, where you really took on the, the instructional leadership and you've you know, one of the things that we charged you with as a committee during that evaluation process was one, you were taking on curriculum prior to Dr. McIntyre joining. Then you got to find somebody to come in, and we added the role, and Dr. McIntyre has come in, and you haven't taken your finger off the pulse. You've continued on with your growth and your development in that, and to Patrick's point as well, uh, the DESC sometimes it'll be, uh, it's it's not exactly the straightest road in the world to follow, um, and they tend to like to put a lot of speed bumps in there just for their own fun and amusement at times, it seems. But uh, you've done a nice job of continuing to navigate through that, so kudos. Thank you. All right, that being said, let's move on to the next one. Next one is management and operations. So the subcategories here are environment, human resource management and development, scheduling management information systems, laws, ethics, and policies, and the final is fiscal systems. Um, within each of these categories, again, the majority of the, the, the majority of the evaluations did come through with a proficient in each of these subcategories and with an overall rating of proficient. Any individual comments? Patrick. Uh, so I did rate Bob as proficient in all of these categories. And it's, it's, Bob is a, I would believe Bob to be a natural leader. Um, and it's obvious that he creates a good culture. He's very well regarded by his staff. Um, one thing that I think that, that he could probably continue to work on and has been working on, and this is a comment that I had last year, um, is that I would like to see, um, sometimes I feel like the principals don't walk in lockstep with Bob's vision. And I feel like when they add their own flavor to what Bob, um, to what Bob envisions, um, sometimes we have applications of policies that aren't quite even across all of our school levels. Uh, again, not that this takes away from his proficiency in this category, but I think it's something that, that merits a mention. Uh, the only piece I'll add in this, and this was a comment that I had made during mine as well, which is, um, and it speaks a little bit of what Patrick was talking about, but I would say again, I, I did rate you proficient in each of these categories um, as well. Um, you know, what I would say is, is I think overall you do very well in this. Um, again, I think your leadership skills are are exceptional um, and as, as we've talked about in the past as well and it's something that you know is I would I would encourage you to continue to continue to develop your skills on which is um, when you get somebody that is a, such a strong natural leader as you are um, it's that balance between leading and managing and the propensity to over lead and under manage at times and keeping that very delicate balance um, is something that is going to is a con is a constant work in progress for all leaders. I would encourage you to continue to manage that ba continue to work on that balance between leading and managing. Um, again, doesn't impact the profession rating. I think you do an ex I think you do an exceptional job, but that continue to work on that. That's sure. a, that's a piece that's will continue to come up at times throughout your leadership career. Sure. Joe, I just wanted to add. Um, so I rated. <coughs> Bob is proficient in each of these um, indicators as well, but I just wanted to touch on uh, the first one, environment. Um, and uh, as you all well know, uh, the safety and wellness of our students and staff has always been a, a priority uh, for this committee and, and for Bob. And I just wanted to highlight um, you know, some, of the, some of the key accomplishments for him this year in, in that regard. Um, you know, the training seminars for the Secretary's Administrative Assistance, the new RAVE Mobile Safety Initiative that he introduced uh, to, into the district. Um, and we continue to focus on educational programs and resources that address the, the social and emotional well-being of all our students. And some of those highlights were the Chris Heron uh, presentation that was done uh, la late last year, and then um, the grant to fund the Milford Students Assessment and Intervention Program, um, which is aimed for kids in middle school and in high school to help them with some of their um, behavioral and social needs as well. So, um, you know, that's. I know a priority for you, and, and, and I know will continue to be a priority for, for all of us going forward. Excellent. Thank you, Joe. All right, we'll move into the next section. So the next section is family and community engagement. Um, so the, the subcategories for this are engagement, sharing responsibility, communication, and family concerns. Um, in this category, the first three subcategories of engagement, sharing responsibility, and communication the overall rating from the committee was was proficient in family concerns um, it was ex it the rating was exemplary um, certainly something that uh, you know should be you know, very proud of so 
Thank you. Any comments from the committee? Jeff. Yeah, um, so th th this was an area that, that I felt was one of Bob's greatest strengths, and, and, and I rated him as exemplary for uh, both engagement and sharing responsibility. I just felt that um, you know, Bob's performance in this area is very strong. Uh, he, he does a great job communicating with families and other Milford departments in the community in general. Um, he, over the past year, he spent a considerable amount of time in <coughs> advocating for the, the new Woodland School project. Uh, and that really demonstrated some of those collab collaborative skills that um, that he, he, he has. Uh, and then he's worked very closely with other town departments on several initiatives. Um, I know he provided a lot of analysis during the whole casino debate. Um, he's heavily involved with the technology task force, and he's involved in a lot of local boards and organizations and leverages many of those relationships for the greater good of the, the Milford School District. Mike, you had your hand up next? Yeah. Uh, in this category, I, I uh, graded Bob exemplary in every <coughs> category. Um, and the, the reason that I did it, it was two reasons. Number one, again, I go back to the engagement that he has with families and with his staff, the events that I see him attending, you know, in the evenings, whether it's school related or in the community, the chamber, whatever, you know, whatever it is. Um, but also, what played a big factor for me was as as everybody on the committee knows, I deal with the public and I meet a lot of people and I talk to a lot of people. And when I talk to people in education that are in education for a living and they don't know that I'm on the school committee and they're voicing their opinion, I say, I just sit, you know, stand there quietly and listen and say, I'm so fortunate or we're so fortunate to have a person like Dr. Tremblay in these particular areas because these are areas that they're talking about in that the person, whoever it is, just doesn't get seen in the community, um, doesn't attend, uh, you know, pan picks the events they're going to attend. I think Bob attends almost every single event he can get his hands on. Um, to the cake, another classic example. Um, and, and I just, you know, you listen to these people, and they're not only are they frustrated, they struggle with it. They're looking for their leader, and their leader isn't there. I'm not criticizing anybody, I'm just saying that on our end, we don't have that problem. We have a leader that's out there in the community every single day representing the Milford Public Schools. Okay. All right, we'll move on to the next category. Uh, the final category here is, um, <coughs> is a uh, professional culture, and the subcategories for this are commitment to high standards, culture, um, cultural proficiency, communication, continuous learning, shared vision, managing conflict. Uh, in this category, again, the, the committee's responses were uh, proficient rating. Um, any members have any comments from their comments that they wrote down? Patrick. So <coughs> last year in the managing conflict category, I actually rated Bob as needs improvement. Um, and this year I ranked him as proficient. And uh, I, I do want to comment that his, his awareness of um, you know, potential managing a school system, I imagine, is a very difficult thing. There are a lot of professionals, very highly educated, who have opinions and who are the leaders in their own classroom every single day. And there can be a lot of, there can potentially be conflict that occur between staff members and, and among staff members. And um, that's a very difficult environment to, to have a handle on, on the conflict that occurs. And I think that um, you've done an excellent job this year, Bob, of just in increasing, not that you were unaware before, but increasing a level of, of awareness and really working on the things that the committee asked you to work on. And so I've, I've just seen an incredible amount of progress with that. And when we take something from a needs improvement category to a proficient category, I, I think it, it, it merits a mention in this, in this meeting. Thank you. I also wanted to comment. John. Um, yeah. As someone who's been trained in this tool, um, checking the box exemplary feels like you sh you're not supposed to do it um, <laughs> because that's really we, we have been trained that proficient is the standard that we're striving for and I did mark two categories in this standard as exemplary and I felt that strongly about them which is communication as, as has been stated over and over tonight and that shared vision and that shared vision really talks about helping every student succeed both where they are today and where th we hope that they're going to go in the future and when I hear principals and our assistant superintendent and Dr. Tremblay talk about um, the ways we're going to look at learning models and the way we're going to shift the things that we do. Sometimes they didn't go as well as maybe we thought they were going to, but um, opening that back up for communication and, and for listening. 
um, looking at our high school kids and making sure that we have avenues for them to succeed, um, looking at our students with English language learning challenges and making sure that we have things translated for them. When I get the note from home from Woodland that comes in a variety of languages this year, or when we hear the superintendent's voice coming in a different language, um, that talks about that sensitivity um, to different kinds of learners in different family situations that it's not always natural for every superintendent of schools and it, it feels like it comes naturally for ours. Okay. All right. So uh, that, as they say, is, is the end of that uh, particular evaluation. Bob, any, uh, anything from you? You're the receiver on this one. Yeah, so well, you what know, have you got, uh, I've been on the receiving end of all kinds of different reports in the, in the, uh, <laughs> in the, in the eight <laughs> years in the committee. This is among the most humbling I've had. Uh, I'd like to thank the, the school committee um, for your continued support of me and, and encouragement and uh, helping me uh, to improve in areas where improvement's needed. There's always room for improvement, and uh, this is, even though it's, it's a very positive report, there's still room for me in my own reflections to grow professionally. Now, some of um, what you see, and I've had the, the benefit now of being on two, I'm on two accreditation committees for NEASC, and Milford, of course, has participated in over the years in NEASC, and so you go out and visit a school and uh, I guess the only thing I really know is Milford, so for me it's, it can always be better, it can always be better. And so you start visiting other schools and realize, wow, this is, this is really eye-opening as just how many things we have going well. And uh, when we had the um, Secretary Matt Malone came to visit Milford High School and we had a chance to, to brag as it could be better. And I'm proud of that in Milford. I'm proud that we have an attitude that it's never good enough. It can always be better. And uh, I'm proud to be in a district that values that. Um, the, the reflection for me, and uh, I, 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 enjoy, I can think of Milford, I, although I live in Menden, I think of Milford as home. And my family, uh, my kids know their way around every school in this school district because we spend time here. And the events are like family events, and the staff to me is like a family, albeit sometimes with all the family dysfunction that you have <laughs> in your family. <laughs> and you manage that, and, you, and it's the people, and, and uh, there's not a day in the, uh, in the 17 years I've been in Milford now uh, that I've not jumped out of bed to come to this job. And it's one I take very, pr I'm very proud of this community, I'm very proud to serve this community. It presents some tremendous challenges. Um, despite those challenges, we continue to be a level two school district. We continue to have a vision for one-to-one -one technology, which we'll, we'll get to. We continue to have a high expectations for kids and what we want our children to do. And this school committee and school committees before it have held a high standard for its superintendent and for its administrators to be excellent. And, uh, and that's the kind of district that I want to be in. And that's the kind of district that I want to stay in. Because that's the kind of leadership uh, that, I, that I believe in. So. Uh, I'm not really sure what to say and how to reflect on all this, except that I want to say thank you, and it's a privilege to serve this town. I, I sat down and I, I thought a lot, and I was around, Patrick was around, the year that we were pretty rough on you. And uh, it came out in the media that we had to give back, <laughs> and I started looking at the progression or the progress that you had made over the years and, and, and really how far you had come and you've just you've made some fantastic improvements and I just want to go on record as saying in my opinion this is an A plus job well done thank you Mr. Chairman okay. thank you and we are right on time hey actually can I, can oh. I oh, Patrick's oh, call I don't want to one done. done go ahead all right uh, you know me I'm not going to give you an A plus or anybody an A plus and let's face it Bob I mean we've we've had some fun and we've Certainly uh, agreed to disagree on lots of things, uh, you know, lots of things this year too. But, you know, I tell everybody when, you know, it, and I, I tell everybody, you know, we're so lucky to have you because your job has to be one of the worst jobs I could ever imagine, right? <laughs> it's not easy. It's extremely hard. And plus you have to deal with, you know, the likes of myself and, and some <laughs> other folks, you know, but it's, it's, it's a tough challenge and, um, and it's a political game too. And you do it extremely well. And, uh, you know, I, I know there's been times that you've, you know, you and I have had conversations and I try telling you all the time, Bob, I, you know, deep down, I think you do a great job. And I think this is a great opportunity for me publicly to say that to, to everybody in this town, that we are extremely lucky to have somebody with your talent and, uh, 
you know, your ability to juggle everything that's involved in being the superintendent the way that you do. So, um, you know, good job. Uh, but again, you know, there's always areas that you can improve. And, you know, sometimes when I highlight things or bring things up, it's because I want you to do better. You know, I've said that before in previous meetings, and, and I mean that. So, Thanks, anyway, good job. Thanks. I just want to comment very briefly on the evaluation process because Mike and I have been doing this for a while and <laughs> there have been committees that got along better and committees that got along less well over the time but I think the course of this evaluation when it comes time to evaluate it, it's strange how the committee always seems to be on the same page and, and I think that that's out of fairness and respect for the job that you do and I think it's also out of the understanding that if we give you honest feedback that you're going to make the improvements that we want you to make and you can become you know the best superintendent you could possibly be and so it's just been this has been a very good process i think it's been so long as i've been involved in this committee and and i think you know it puppy dogs and ice cream cones in many communities uh, this community is not this community expects uh, accountability and you know and I, and I hold that in high regard actually um, it's funny you mentioned about the uh, the leading versus managing and, and the, uh, the, the the vision and having sure that the principals this this buy-in uh, tomorrow we have a professional development day in Milford as as uh, you know and I'll be actually presenting uh, the, the the plan the strategic plan um, you know believe me a, a, a positive a positive report card like this one uh, does not mean that I now sit back and, and, and don't take those next steps to become even challenge myself even more. It's, a, it's, it's an innate for me to want to challenge myself and please know that I will not sit back and relax on a good report. There's much more work to be done and I'm up to the challenge. Excellent. Thank you. And Thank uh, you. Yeah, it's been, you've had a good year, Bob, and I've, I've told you this, you and I have had private conversations about this. Anybody that wants to do their annual, re I challenge anybody, we talk about, <laughs> oh, well, it's the private sector versus the public sector. And I challenge anybody that would be willing to have their annual review done on television <laughs> by seven independently elected individuals. I still think you ought to have your head checked. However, <laughs> I think uh, you do a fantastic job. You really do uh, uh, your you know, you work really hard at this job, you continue to develop, and again, you're absolutely correct. This committee expects more. And even in a good even in a good review, and I will tell you, having gone through and I got to read each of yours as they came in, and I printed them all out, and I'm sitting them with them all on my desk, sitting at home, and I'm reading through them, and I'm like, did I print that one twice? No, no, it's, just, it's two different ones, but <laughs> we really, they're, they're just seeing that seven personalities, and coming from very different backgrounds, very diverse work experiences, life experiences, and professional experiences. Um, absolutely right. We do ex idea. Good one. So we'll take a, a motion from Patrick, a second from Jen. All in favor? And we will move forward. Thank you. Next, we have the appointment of the Milford uh, Public Schools uh, Wellness Committee representative. Um, so this is a position that um, really is going to be going forward and is going to be working um, sort of in tandem, as, I, as, I, as we've been talking about. This is something where we should have, um, Don had brought this up to us earlier in the year, um, and brought this to our attention where the school committee is supposed to have a representative that's appointed to this committee. We have not had one previously, so we do need to have somebody that is um, going to be appointed to that wellness committee. Um, that being said, I, I did give some thought to this, and I've, I've not had an opportunity to reach out to uh, the individual I think would be um, a good person to join in on this. I do think it's something that's going to run in tandem. We talked about joining with the safety and security committee as well. Uh, that being said, um, in addition to your vice chair duties, Mike, would you be willing to take sure. on that? Absolutely. Excellent. So, uh, Mike, I'll have you. Uh, we'll appoint you as our as our wellness representative. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Moving forward, 
and I see it's PowerPoint time. <laughs> so, but we're not there yet. So we got to go to Kathy <laughs> first. Get, Kevin, He's getting all warmed up. I see the PowerPoint's coming. Don't screw it up with me. Don't screw it up with me. It's a good night. <laughs> so, he said eight minutes. He said eight minutes. I, I did want to highlight that I'm five minutes ahead. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, can I make one comment? Um, You're going to mess up my five minutes. No, no, no. <laughs> I just wanted to point out because, uh, you know, in, in fairness to, the, uh, to Don, too, and Don, I, I just want to back to you earlier. I thank you for the, the, the comments tonight. And, and, and Don uh, uh, brought up a very important point in terms of communication where that could be improved. And uh, what you'll see in the Dropbox, and I, I bring it up just for a reminder to everybody, that we've included in the Dropbox now all of these subcommittees, which we'll get to after, that as we have meeting agendas that. and meeting minutes, you know, the wellness and whatever we have, uh, it was a point well taken. How can we can better communicate those without sending you a thousand emails to read? So. Uh, from time to time, check your um, uh, Dropbox, and we'll include minutes in there from every subcommittee meeting, whether or not it's reported at school committee or it's another, it's another subcommittee in the school district. And you'll find all the information there from all the meeting agendas and meeting minutes. So if you want to go back and check on something or if you're hearing a concern from, uh, from a parent or constituent and you want to follow up on that, uh, let me know that, and I'll point you to the right direction. But feel free. Those will be on the Dropbox and updated periodically. Well, would you have Melissa, uh, at least for me, I, I don't want to speak for everybody, but would you have Melissa please email out my Dropbox uh, login name and ID so I can access it from my personal devices? Yes. Um, so have her email that out to just give you the access information that you'll need? Yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, if the rest of the committee members want it as well. I mean, I have, you know, oh, I have 15 yeah, yeah. Apple devices and I travel all the time, so if I can oh, I get them on any mean. device, I'd like to do I think that, I understand. So. You know what I'll do? Uh, I'll, at the uh, closing meeting, I'll give you the information. I think I have it right here with me, okay. actually. Thank you. All right, Thanks. so um, Kathy, you're up first. So we've got the report of the Assistant Superintendent and bus uh, for Business and Human Resources. I have for the committee's approval this evening six warrants. The first warrant is in the amount of $344,833.38. Okay, take a motion from Joe, second from Don. All in favor? Okay, motion second. passes. Sorry. Second warrant is in the amount of $96,892.72. Okay. Take a motion from Mike. Second from Jen. All in favor? All in favor. Motion passes. The third warrant is in the amount of $242,210.44. Okay. Take a motion from Patrick. Second from Joey. All in favor? Motion passes. The fourth warrant is in the amount of $26,345.75. Okay. Take a motion from Mike, second from Jen. All in favor? Motion passes. The fifth warrant is in the amount of $31,120.03. Okay. Take a motion from Joe, second from Jen. All in favor? Motion passes. And the last warrant is in the amount of $23,976.18. Okay. Take a motion from Don, second from Patrick. All in favor? Motion passes. The committee also has a list of the latest uh, appointments and hires from our previous meeting. Mm -hmm. No vote is required. We do have a um, jury duty request for Eileen Turpin, which does require a school committee vote. Okay. Uh, any members have any questions? Can you just make a vote to always approve? <laughs> <laughs> Since it's against the law for us not to. Seriously, can somebody talk to Jerry? And I know Mike loves it. But <laughs> <laughs> I was going to let Mike make the motion. I know. But, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, actually, that may be something, especially since it's, it's actually would be against the law if we didn't right. do it. Well, Jerry will be here later this evening. Yeah, we can ask him during right, executive we'll session. Him. But Peace either way, I'll... Mike, would you like to make I a motion? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, <laughs> Mike takes a motion, Donnie here. takes a second. Jerry duty. <laughs> All <laughs> in favor? Motion passes. Uh, under personnel update, I'd like just to brief the committee uh, quickly about the uh, position for the athletic director, where we stand currently. The posting has closed. We have received um, 100 applicants uh, all over the country. The interest came from all over the country. Um, Nick Sakili uh, and the other screening committee members have gone through them all, uh, which would be Nick Sakili, Rich Pia Gustavo, Tony Chinapi, and um, Fran Witten, who's a retired AD from the Algonquin uh, School Department. They have brought that um, 100 down to 15. Within that 15, Nick 
very nicely put together a rubric to rate each one of those 15 candidates down to a, uh, a field of five, uh, which will be, which has already been forwarded to the three principals to begin the interview process and the hiring process. There were um, other qualified um, Milford candidates that Nick has moved forward um, for John and Nancy and Carrie to consider as well outside of that 15 rubric committee um, recommendation. So it looks like December 1st is going to um, be a live date for us. I think things are moving very fast um, depending on how the interviews move forward. I think we're in line for um, having our recommendation. So just as a, a quick update on that. Just a quick question on that, Kathy. Oh, sure. Is there, is there going to be a transition time? So if this person starts December 1st, I believe we have Nick as the interim until December 1st. Until December 1st. So, so my, my question is, is, is there the ability, and if it's something that we need to bring before the full committee, um, is there the ability to work through a transition time with Nick either for you know a 30-day overlay to help bring this person up to speed, particularly if they are from outside the district, where it's uh, it's it's learning everything from where's the office located <laughs> to um, going through the schedules, understanding what where everything is located, and kind of getting that person as as an onboarding process for that individual. Well, our goal would absolutely be that this uh, selected candidate would work with Nick. The, um, the real issue would be if this candidate is coming from another district, what kind of notice do they have to give depending on who is chosen? So um, our goal would be yes, but it will depend on um, who's chosen and you know maybe there's a little uh, levity with the December 1st date with Nick and maybe he could commit to a few extra days. I'm sure he would do that. So. I think we'll be fine, and I think whoever the committee or the um, principals choose, Nick would work with that person because he right. wants them to be successful. Absolutely. So I don't think we need to be too concerned. Okay. I just have a clarifying question. You meant there's a 15 point rubric that you said they're being assessed on to determine. There was a rubric for the 15, 15 that were candidates. scaled 15 okay. candidates. So they all met certain criteria that were on a rubric. Correct. And then there were some other candidates who you kind of said we're in a different category because they were Milford residents? Correct. So at the end of the day, is it the assumption that whoever gets moved forward, no matter where they're from, is going to meet all the criteria on the rubric? I think the Milford candidates um, were being recommended for an interview. The five candidates that were a part of the rubric process, um, those Milford candidates might not have had all of the skill set that met the high score of that rubric okay. and um, Nick being the athletic director interim athletic director recommended possibly that the Milford candidates at least receive that interview because they are Milford town residents but now at the, at that's the end of the day the assumption would be that whoever is hired would have the skill the complete skill set no matter where they reside that would be my right. expectation yes that yeah. they have okay. to meet the yeah, yeah. If, they didn't, if they didn't make the short list of whatever the, of the hundred, and I haven't seen the applicants or the right. rubric, right. Uh, but my expectation would be that yeah, if there's a, if there's a threshold of credibility, right. then we should be true to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. And um, I also have for the committee's approval this evening, professional development in the amount of $37,935.50 and that does require a vote. Okay. Take a motion from Patrick, second from Joe. All in favor? Motion passes. And there, oh, and there are gifts, Mr. Chair. We have Chair. two gifts, yes, I see that. Uh, so the first one is for, is, um, it is from the Blackstone Valley Ed Foundation. Uh, it's a gift, uh, the name of the gift is for the Hospitality and Tourism um, Management Program. And it is in, wow, very generous, in the amount of $2,000. That's great. That's fantastic. Uh, the next one is, uh, the donor is the Brookside, PT, uh, Brookside Elementary PTO. Um, it's just a gift and donation. It's uh, for the purpose of, a, of the Spring Gala, and it is the amount of $1,500. So we have some very generous donations. Very generous. Night, so. 
uh, can you please make sure we send a thank you note Absolutely. for each of those? That'd be great. Thank you. Um, so for those two gifts, we'll take them as uh, one solid vote. Uh, take a motion to accept the gifts. Motion from Mike, second from Joey. All in favor? Motion passes. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Every time we go through this, so Kathy, I love that how concise you are. That being said, I'm a little <laughs> nauseous over the amount of money that we just spent. Um, but uh, I, it's necessary and, and goes to the right place. And I know that and we're watching every penny. Exactly. It is. It still doesn't change the mindset that that's still, there's full houses that we just paid for. So. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Uh, up next, we do have Dr. McIntyre. Uh, so for the report of the, super, the, of the Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum, Instruction, and Assessment. Sorry. I know Mike Walsh couldn't sleep last night because he was so excited <laughs> that this was coming today. That's right. So, so hopefully you'll be able to rest well tonight, Mike. A lot of good um, information in here. <laughs> I, I want to give the committee a real high-level overview tonight and follow up with more detailed discussions at future meetings. So I just want to give you kind of the general trends and patterns we're seeing in the district so that um, – that you have an understanding of where we, we stood in terms of the 2014 MCAS performance. Um, we continue to be a level two district, which uh, the levels run from one through five, one being the top level, um, five being districts that are, that are struggling a little bit, um, and we're, we're solidly at level two, which kind of puts us um, in the context of the, the, the evaluation solidly in the proficient category. So. For the ELA MCAS for all students, um, both our CPI, which is our achievement, and growth exceeded the state. The growth made, it, made a great jump from a 55 to a 59, so our students were growing at a, at a nine point um, higher rate than the state. The state average is 50. And this is also the highest ever in Milford's history, too, so I want to congratulate all the hard work of our teachers. Um, it, it, it tied a rate, I think, in 2008. So it's tied our highest rate of growth ever. So that's, that's really fantastic news. Math, um, our overall achievement exceeded the state performance, but our growth dipped this past year. Um, this was uh, one of the first times that the um, questions were more aligned to the 2011 state standards. And the state overall, if you look at the numbers, dropped from um, 80.8 to 80.3. And if you look at the, t the trend for the state tends to be moving up for achievement, and this is the first year as a state, we dip for achievement, and some of that is um, a reflection of the new, the new standards being assessed. Um, our students with disabilities in English language arts, um, our growth declined this year, but still exceeded the state's growth, and our achievement was slightly below that of the state overall. Kevin, is that all students on an IEP? Is that that's every student um, three through ten, basically. That's on, I, tested, yeah. on an IEP. Correct. Got so it. Th this Thank is the you. full. This is the full district view. That's a good question. Are there, Kevin? Are there students that could be receiving uh, services from the special education department that aren't on an IEP that wouldn't show up on this? No, every student that rec is receiving an IEP service would be reflected in this report. Okay. So, so for math, um, we were below the state average for both achievement and growth this year, and that's something, um, that's something that we're really looking at is, is how can we reverse this trend and move it in a more positive direction. <coughs> and I've been having those conversations both with um, principals and our curriculum team leaders. But it's not really a significant departure from our trend in the past. No, 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 no. But it, it's, it's concerning in the sense that this is the first time we're being tested kind of under these new standards, which will be held accountable for the park tests as well. The questions that are being asked are going to be even more complex than last year, and we really want to make sure that students are prepared going into the assessment to really show what they can do. For um, our, our low-income students, uh, we exceeded the state uh, performance and achievement, and we were significantly, um, significantly higher in growth, um, by 10 points, actually. And again, for, our, our, for the math performance of our students who fall in the low-income category, um, we exceeded the state in terms of achievement and had the, exa and had the exact same growth as the, as the state. So we were pretty similar to the, to the state averages in terms of mathematics. Where, where we saw a big jump was um, our FLEP students, which is our former limited English proficient students. So these are students that were ELL students that have exited from that program. And we were actually um, 15 points higher than the state and this is, this is due in part to a restructuring to the ELL program in terms of exiting criteria. And we're finding that if we um, maintain students in the program, uh, 
un until they meet certain kind of higher benchmarks, they tend to do better once they once they leave and once they're kind of more mainstreamed into the regular regular program. And, and you're going to see. Interrupt you really quickly there. And, and uh, the point I meant to make earlier too, uh, uh, after the evaluation, was um, not only do we do I surround myself with people who are smarter than I, but also the school committee has been outstanding in supporting what we believe to be the right vision for this district. And these results, these kinds of things you're hearing Kevin report on tonight, just prove that out. That you know, Jen Lancaster should be credited for the work that she's done. And she's and done a fantastic she job. She really has, and, and and the forward vision she has for how these students can make that kind of growth. So uh, I meant to thank the committee also uh, just for the support in every budget we've passed and the, the kind of scrutiny we've presented uh, new positions, Kevin being among them, and the work we've done to adding positions where we think that need is in place. And I hope you're seeing that the fruit of that of that effort here. So I, I don't mean to believe I, I, you're on the clock, so that you only have two minutes. The nine left, minutes is out like the window now. It's over now. So <laughs> we're, sorry, Kevin. we're at nine minutes now. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Um, for the, ELL, the ELA MCAS for our English language learners, those numbers are um, slightly below the state average in achievement and, and, and 11 points lower in growth. And some of that is, is the swap and the structuring of the program. So we saw a big growth with the FLEPS. We saw a little bit of a dip with the ELL population. We expected that just based on some of the restructuring that we did. So I just want to highlight some successes that we've had. Um, again, overall the student growth percentage for the district in ELA is 59, which is um, nine points higher than the state average. The student growth percentage at grade six was 67.5, and grade seven was 64 for mathematics, which are phenomenal numbers. That puts those, those groups in that high impact on student learning, which is, which is fantastic. And these are, these are median numbers, not averages, so it just tells you that the learning that's happening at those grade levels is amazing. Um, for English language arts, um, at grade six was 73, and grade seven was 68, which is also, they're just fantastic numbers. The Woodland um, ELA student growth percentile increased by seven points, which is, a, which is an amazing jump. And the, um, the high school ELA exceeded the state average in every area on the 2014 MCAS. And I'm gonna talk about that in a second, kind of how that happened. And then SGP for FLEP students, again, increased 25%, which, is, which again is a huge jump. Um, last, last summer, Carrie Bonick, the uh, high school principal, worked with her faculty and they worked together on setting a goal for doing writing across the curriculum. And each department in each class set a writing goal. So whether it was physical education, whether it was music, English, math, science, every class set a writing goal, every single class. And in 2013, you can see their MCAS scores, and it's hard to see on this, but some of them are red, which means they're below the state average. Some of them were black, which means they're above the state average. So it was a little mixed. And after just one year of having this writing goal in place, every single standard was above the state average, which really speaks to, number one, just the talent of the educators we have um, across the district, in this case, the high school specifically, but the power of what happens when you set a goal, you target it, and you see great improvement. And it's just a fantastic accomplishment. And, and it's rare when you see something like this happen in the first year, because Carrie and I had several conversations over the course of the year, and she said, well, what if this doesn't work? And I said, well, it might take a couple of years to actually really get results, because it's gonna take time for people, and, and they're all using a, a, a modified version of the park rubric, so they're, they're ahead of the game in that, in that department too. But immediately we saw great results. And, and this year they're kind of refining that goal to try to get the writing even better across you know, 9 through 12. So I just wanted to highlight that because that was like a whole school initiative where you really saw something pay off from start to finish. And I want to give the folks at the high school a lot of credit for that because they did a really nice job. So some challenges that, that we we're seeing is um, our overall math growth percentile dip four points overall, and we're, we're examining that. Again, we tend to be above the state average, um, hovering around 50. We, we, we dip below 50 for the first time in four or five years, and we really want to look at that. I think some of that is attributable, again, to the question focus on the 2011 standards and, and some alignment issues, but we're really looking at that, and we're examining that because we want the students to be successful, and we want them to be prepared. Um, again, our overall mathematics achievement decreased 1.5 points as a district. 
We continue to need to close achievement gaps for students with disabilities, our English language learners, and our low-income st students in both um, language arts and mathematics. We have a new test in place for grades three through eight that we're gonna be putting into place this year. We're spending a fair amount of time in professional development this tomorrow kind of talking about what that's gonna look like, what it's gonna mean, how it's gonna roll out this year. Um, and again, field testing from across um, the state with the park last year showed that there was a disconnect um, between kind of the, the 2011 standards and what's happening in classrooms across Massachusetts, which is part of the reason why we saw a dip in achievement overall across the state as well, which doesn't happen. Usually they, they kind of trend upward a little bit, especially when you're looking at the aggregate. Um, literacy across the curriculum continues to be a priority. We continue to try to increase rigor in tasks, text complexity, and the level of questions that are being asked in the classroom. Um, and, and we're kind of working on that as a daily basis and trying to integrate that into what in, into the curriculum we're already using. And that's 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 kind of the this is the general presentation of the overall results. Thank you, Kevin. Great. I, I Thank know you. you I know you mentioned that uh, you're going to kind of go into depth and kind of have a, more absolutely. Of a discussion but I just want to I just want to put, put it out just the general scores <coughs> for everybody, and then we can kind of discuss it as the year goes on. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. Well done. Did you have a question? Uh, the only comment I was going to make was, <clears throat> you know, when you look at these stats, you, you know, it's not like there's a huge spike up or down. There, there are there's a couple places you got to really dig, and it's not just us; it's the entire state, right. right? So I think it's important for everybody to realize how hard it is to actually make, you know, significant significant gains in in any of these areas. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I remember, you know, over the last few years of being on the school committee, you know, the, w the one thing that I've realized is our teachers do a great job, our students do a great job, but there are some areas that you highlight, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I, I don't see how you're gonna impact, you know, students with disabilities or, but the ELL programs, and that's where I think we've made our greatest strides, especially if you look at 2012 to 2014, I mean, 2012, proficient was 11% and the state was 23. And now we've closed that gap to 17 to 23, which to me is our, our best area of improvement. And I know uh, from talking, um, you know, t to some of the teachers here, you know, there's things that we've put in place, like the summer reading programs mm -hmm. and stuff like that, that again, are, you know, really help us uh, in, in our district have a major impact on, on these stats. What I'd like to understand it, you know, maybe for a future meeting is, you know, are there some schools that are really exceeding in the ELL space that are doing things that we're not? And, and what are those things? Because, you know, if the state's averaging 23 and we're only at 17 and proficient, there's got to be some schools out there that are knocking it out of the park. And uh, so just, you know, trying to come up with some, some other ideas, because I think that's the number one area for us to have a an impact on the overall so, numbers, yep. probably the easiest one. Mm -hmm. and, and I also know that there's a there's a great uh, impact to the taxpayer, you know, to get ELL students into the regular classroom faster. And over the last few years, especially for the newcomers, you know, we've seen charts, historical data, you know, on, on average it takes seven years. And I remember saying when the reading program came into place, it would be nice to see if that has an impact in getting them uh, into the regular classrooms faster. And, Mm -hmm. So, so I, 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 I'm really happy with these numbers. I, I think it's, you know, um, we're doing a good, good job. Uh, but if there are uh, schools that we could reach out to that are really kicking it, you know, in, yeah, in this yeah, area. Yeah, I, I can tell you just quickly, could, Jen Lancaster's yeah. on several state level committees where they're looking at that very thing, like what right. models are leading to the best results. Right. Yeah, and if there's something that you need the support of the school committee to implement those things, you know, certainly love to hear them. Great, I appreciate that. Thank you. Excellent. Okay. All right. Great. Thank, Thank you, Dr. McIntyre. All right. I should. We, we will move on to the next uh, <coughs> the next agenda item, which is just our subcommittee updates. So we'll start with the athletic subcommittee. So Joey and Don, have you guys had a chance to meet? No, we didn't meet. Okay. Since the last meeting. Okay. Um, safety and security. Have you guys met since the last meeting? Last meeting is December 15th. <coughs> okay. Uh, policy subcommittee. Have you guys met since the last meeting? Next meeting is October 23rd. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, the next one is Woodland School Building Project. Very, very brief update. Um, so 
So we haven't we haven't met as a full committee yet this month, um, but the working group, which is a sort of a subgroup of the entire committee, continues to meet on a weekly basis. Um, there were uh, there are a couple of um, there are a couple of hurdles that are coming up in the very near future. So uh, back in September, we submitted um, what they call 60% documents, meaning the the building is 60% complete, and we submit it to the um, the school building authority, and they come back with questions. And an example of a question would be. The last time when the architect submitted the the plans there were 15 different paint colors and the that the MSBA looked at it and said does the school building committee know that you're planning to use 15 paint colors and the architect said no 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 we're not going to do that these is the palette that we want to pull from so these are the types of in-depth questions that they're asking to make sure that we stay on budget so uh, our next hurdle is going to be the 90 percent complete documents which we're going to submit on uh, October 16th and so that will prompt another review by the school building committee. They'll have more questions for us, I'm sure. Um, but right now we are, we're moving forward. We are on budget, we are on time, and we're very excited. Thank you. All right, um, and uh, then we have wellness. We have our first meeting October 15th. Okay. Um, there is one that is not on here, and it's just the middle school reuse. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, and I just want to kind of go over that for the benefit of the committee. So we have had one meeting. It was simply an organizational meeting. Uh, we just sort of laid out what we were going to uh, discuss. <coughs> Bob was in attendance at that meeting as well as myself. Um, we really, it was an organizational meeting. Part of what we talked about and was discussed at the meeting was really getting an understanding of what we have from a building. Um, the need for really, and, and you've seen probably through some media outlets as well as um, an upcoming for the town meeting warrant, um, uh, and ask for an appropriation of forty thousand dollars, and that's to hire a consultant for a consulting firm to come in. That's going to do an engineering um, assessment of the building. Part of that engineering assessment is to get an understanding of what are the what what could potentially the building be used for. So part of what was talked about was, as we've talked about as a committee and has been talked about at length, which is, um, could it be used for? If we wanted to go, if we decided we wanted to go down the route and recommend recommendation, bless you, of um, senior housing. If we wanted to keep it for administrative use and we wanted to turn it into offices, well, these are classrooms. They've got 12 foot ceilings, and they've got their rooms this roughly the size of this room. Um, as I s jokingly said to Bob, as nice as it would be to have this one room be just one, just his office, uh, seems a little roomy for one person. If we wanted to subdivide that, well, there's HVAC impacts with that. There may only be one, one duct that comes into the room. Well, what does that look like? What does it take from a compliance perspective for Americans with Disabilities Act and meeting all those requirements? So what ultimately came up was <coughs> Rick Villani, town administrator, had gone through it and actually had already done the due diligence to uncover what the cost would be for a firm to come in that will look at what's the building structure look like. Um, and the pieces that we got to keep in mind is we talked about it being potential mixed use, what's the gym use look like, what's the, you know, what the capabilities for the building, um, and keeping in mind, you know, part of the conversation I know that's been talked about around town is, oh, well, mixed use, well, what if it went into, you know, office space? Well, okay, so what does parking look like? Okay, parking we know is a challenge. It's, se it's almost a 71,000 square foot building. That is a huge amount of space. It's not very big from a school perspective, that being said, when you're talking about commercial use, 71,000 square feet of, bu of business use is a gigantic building to have nobody work there because <laughs> they don't have any place to put a car. So all of these pieces are w in the context of the conversation. Um, our next meeting is actually on October 15th, so next week, and it's actually a planned visit and walkthrough of the building of the committee. Uh, for, you know, Bob and I are looking at it going, yeah, we're in, Bob's in the building all the time. I'm in it at least a couple times a year. But there are members of the committee that haven't been in there since they were students. Um, and some of them are graduated many, many, many years before I did. So it's been a while. So they want to come back through and just see what we're talking about from a building perspective. What does the parking really look like? So that's our next planned meeting. We'll give updates as things go forward. And I'll add that as a feature item Great. too Thank as you. well. Because I think it missed. Okay. All right. Uh, next up is we do have the school committee liaison reports. So this is where each member was given a school. Um, any updates from any of the members based on any conversations or anything they've had from the schools? Okay. 
I, I just have one, and it's uh, with Stacy Middle School. They did have their back-to-school night, open house. Uh, went off flawlessly. They did a phenomenal job. In fact, I think it was probably one of the best organized um, that I've seen to date, um, and I've been to a number of them. So, um, you know, kudos to the teachers. It was great to see their engagement and their enthusiasm, um, and, uh, you know, really just what a, what a phenomenal year they have ahead of them there. So kudos to Nancy and the team there. And all the teachers did a, just did a great job. And I've been seeing some emails. It looks like everybody's getting correspondence, newsletters, and things. So, mm -hmm. okay, very oh, yeah. good. Okay. All right, we'll move on. So, next item, you'll notice that we did have an, ad uh, an agenda item change. It went from new business to future agenda items. Um, this is just that uh, just mixing things up a little bit. So, future agenda items, I think, that are kind of depicts based on some conversations we had as part of our last educational. Uh, component that we had with our governance board um, at a meeting earlier in the uh, early in September. So uh, we did change this to future agenda items. Do any um, uh, any members have any items for future agenda? I know that I do have one just as it pertains as to follow up to the end of cycle. Um, but I'll add that and defer to the committee first if there's any future agenda items people would like to see. Okay. Um, so my the future agenda item that I would like to that uh, we would move forward is kind of a next step for the end of cycle evaluation for the superintendent would be to just as we do on an annual basis just to review his contract um, and um, and uh, discuss uh, salary evaluation. Um, so for a future agenda item, that would be uh, that is something that would be done as is typical and common um, during an executive session. So it'd be an executive session item for a for a future meeting. Um, we want to do if, and I'll turn to the pleasure of the committee for the next for the next meeting in October, yeah. for the second yeah. meeting in October. Yeah. After, after Bob's goal presentation, is an appropriate time to do that. Yeah, yeah. you're going to do goals okay. next meeting. Next right? meeting, yeah. Okay, so we'll do that as a, we will have an executive session next meeting. Okay. Um, any other members? Uh, so next item would be any old business. Have any members have any old business? Seeing none, we'll move forward. Um, next item up is adjournment. We do have an executive session this, uh, this evening um, for the purposes of hearing a step three grievance through the MTA and contract discussion. Um, we will not be returning. So uh, if I can have a motion from Joey, second from Jen for adjournment. All in favor? Meeting is adjourned. Have a good night. Good evening, everyone.